go. Hello, my name is Doug Roper, and I'll be bringing you the lesson today from Southside Baptist Church. And we're going to be in, in the book of Ecclesiastes, and uh, this was written by Solomon. And it's going to be, the first lesson is called Purpose Questioned. And what that means like that is, what is our purpose in life? You know, what, what are we here for? You know, well, the lesson tells us that apart from God, then our life is meaningless. So our lives do have a purpose, and knowing that we have a purpose should help us understand that, of course, we need to seek out that purpose by way of trusting God and His Son, Jesus Christ. So, you know, life can be like, like a hamster wheel. The lesson tells us that, you know, that, you know, a salesman clinches this deal only to spin that wheel again, you know, to try to find another customer. And then what about, uh, you know, you got a cook who, who sends out dish after dish, you know, only to have to clean the grill and then start all over again the next day. How about one of my favorites? You mow the lawn, but guess what? Next week you're going to have to mow it again. Of course, right now with all this heat, we haven't had to do that. It's pretty dry. But anyway, you know, clean the house thoroughly and and it's <laughs> the lesson says but before you even put the cleaning supplies away the dust is already starting to return so the question comes why am i doing this you know what's it all for you know when you come to the end of the end of your life you know we can we can sometimes feel like what a three-year-old says and you all remember this it's why you know why and when you ask, answer that, why? You answer that, why? You answer that, why? So, I mean, you know, it's still an ever, you know, continuing cycle in our heads. So, again, our life does have purpose. And the world of the hamster wheel, so to speak, can blur our vision, you know, to the fact that, you know, that our life does have purpose. But that purpose is only realized when you look to the one who gave you that purpose and that's God our Father Son Jesus Christ so as King Solomon found out looking anywhere else your purpose is meaningless and that's what we will talk about today so let's begin with a word of prayer Heavenly Father God as we come to you today Lord thank you so much for the beautiful sunshine you've given us Lord and we know that uh, you have everything we need and you know what we need Lord so we need to just trust you with that and know that things will be things will be well but anyway God I just pray that you'll use this lesson Lord you'll speak in and through me that it'll be your words and not mine and that you will receive the glory from that Lord and help us to understand that our lives without you is meaningless so thank you again for everything you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. I pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to start in Ecclesiastes 1, 1 through 7. And it begins with the words, it says, The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Now this is Solomon. He was David's son. He's also the king in Jerusalem. He says, Absolute futility, says the teacher, absolute futility everything is futile what does a person gain for all his efforts that he labors under the sun a generation goes and a generation comes but the earth remains forever the sun rises the sun sets panting it hurries back to the place where it rises gusting to the south oh, turning to the north turning turning goes the wind and the wind returns in its cycles it says all the streams flow to the sea yet the sea is never full to the place where the streams flow there they flow again which means you know the rivers it's talking about here as you know all the rivers eventually go to the ocean and, and the ocean never fills up the rivers never run dry so when he's talking about here absolute futility have you ever thought that yourself maybe like you've been at work you know where he feels like you take two steps forward and three steps back you know it's like you just can't gain or how about if a relationship goes south or your plans go awry you know when life isn't going like we'd like or like we hope 
we cry out in frustration a lot of times like what's the point why should we well Solomon uses different things he uses he said life can be like the repetitive cycle of the sun he says life seems like the directionless flow of the wind and then it also says that life seems like a never-ending flow of the rivers to the sea you know why is it that so many people feel unsatisfied no matter how much that they accomplish well without God what we do in life can feel pointless and without God what we do in life also doesn't satisfy so let's talk about this and what Solomon has to say it says you know the teacher here Solomon is saying that everything in life is meaningless now Ecclesiastes the book of Ecclesiastes falls into this category of the Bible's wisdom literature they call it which is Job Proverbs Ecclesiastes and it's a reflection on the meaning of life it says specifically that life without God so no matter how much one attains or acquires in the world it says it's ultimately without meaning now the teacher here it says the exact meaning in Hebrew is uncertain it said it, it could refer you know to some speaker in an assembly uh, sometimes in the Bible it translates as preacher you know it's a title not a proper name you know Solomon wrote as a teacher examining the meaning of life when he says absolute absolute futility here this word is also used to contrast the Lord who is the believers strength and refuge in time of trouble and with the emptiness of idols that cannot deliver anything for those who worship them totally different than what the Lord God can do now when he's talking about under the sun here he's he's talking about anything under heaven you know he refers basically to under the sun when he talks about the earthly perspective you know without God so we're talking about without God in these verses here you know and it, it says you know this perspective here without God without an afterlife or without a final judgment Solomon had restricted the scope of this inquiry to only those things were under the sun meaning before heaven okay and Solomon's focus fully shifts to an understanding that a meaningful life is one in which a person has a relationship or a reverent fear and obedience to the Lord living in light of eternity you know as we trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior we have the promise of eternity to spend eternity with him in heaven when we die so it talks about in verse 4 it says a generation goes a generation comes well a generation here can refer to a period of time or those living in a specific time period and it can also refer to cycles of nature because it talks about uh, the sun rises the sets and it rises again you know summer follows spring you know winter follows fall you know and water falls to the earth it evaporates and returns as rain you know and evaporates again you know it refers to generations relating to both humanity and nature so Solomon here he poetically paints in verse 5 he painted the Sun as a racer you know the Sun rises moves through the sky and then sets and then a the word here for panting you know it says right here it says the Sun rises the Sun sets panting it hurries back to the place where it rises so he's talking about that cycle again where it rises you know it moves across the sky it sets and then it comes back again the next day and rises again but the panting part here can have both a positive and negative connotation because it can be used to describe a woman in labor who you know who grasps breath breathlessly because of the pain that she's going through and it can also describe the longing of the psalmist for God's word now this is in the Psalms where he said he was eager to taste God's commands but it also has a meaning 
to, you know, either the sun joyously rushes from sunrise to sunset or the sun toils from sunrise to sunset with no rest. Now, in verse 6 and 7, he talks about the weather. And he talks about, you know, back in the ancient days, the ancient Israelites were dependent upon the land, water, and weather for their food. So they understood the yearly growing cycles, you know, that related to planting, to tending, and harvesting their crops. But they didn't have our modern scientific understanding of the earth. Now, nature was predictable, but at the same time, incomprehensible. And what that means, the sun rose, the sun set, and then it rose again. You know, the yearly seasons came one right after another. You know, the wind would move in cycles, you know, but the cycles themselves, you know, seemed random and without purpose. And the description of the wind turning and turning means that it returns in its cycles. You know, it just comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. And then when it talks about the streams here, it says they ceasingly flow into the sea, but the streams never empty and the seas are never full. You know, both the wind and the water here are moving, but never seem to accomplish anything. So as we move on here in our verses and we talk more about this, you know, it's bad enough that what we do in life feels pointless at times, but the very pursuit of things will wear us out. You know, no matter how hard we try to experience our own, we'll come away weary and unsatisfied. So let's read Ecclesiastes 1, 8 through 10. Again, we're talking about the earthly point of view from Solomon. He's not talking about heaven. He's not talking about a relationship with God. He's talking about your life without that relationship with God. So now in verse 8, or excuse me, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 8 through 10, it says, All things are wearisome, more than anyone can say. The eye is not satisfied by seeing, or the ear filled with hearing. What has been, and what will be, and what has been done, is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Can one say about anything? Look, this is new. It has already existed in the ages before us. So what he's talking about here, it says no matter how much your eyes see, you're not going to be satisfied. You know, we've all seen things that take our breath away. There's beauty all around us. My wife and I just got back from a vacation in Maine last week. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. You know, you can see the oceans, you see water a lot of different places. We saw different lighthouses. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. But, you know, with, even with the beauty all around us, all the glorious sights that are in God's creation and all the magnificent paintings that we see, the buildings, the gardens, you know, the wonders of the world, they still leave us unsatisfied. You know, it says, no matter what your ears hear, you won't be satisfied. You know, I don't know if you've ever been out in the woods or when you're out in nature just hearing the sounds of the wildlife, you know, or listen to the rain on the roof. I love listening to thunderstorms. I think they're awesome. I love listening to thunderstorms. Or the sound of children playing, you know, or maybe just actual music, listening to music, you know. But when that sound fades away, what are we left with? It says we're left wanting more. So we continue to ask this same question that, that generations before of us have asked, you know, what is life about? You know, how does what I do matter? You know, generation after generation keep asking the same questions. And if we keep viewing under the sun, then we're going to keep coming to the same faulty conclusion that it's all futile. Now, under the sun, again, is here on earth, has nothing to do with, with God or his son. So without God, what we do in life is just a miserable task. See, the, the meaningless life made this teacher, which is Solomon here, weary and unsatisfied. So in verse 8, it says, all things are wearisome. 
And where is some means to work until one's tired or exhausted? You know, it can describe like the farmer's labor, you know, in producing and, and ending up with his harvest, as well as a foolish pursuit of wealth that wears a person out. You know, they're always wanting more, always wanting more. You know, and a person who wearies himself uh, can describe those who grow tired even in their pursuit of God because while on their own, people may grow weary. But the Lord never does. He never grows weary. And he renews the strength of those who trust in him. In Ecclesiastes, the 1, 3 through 8, it summarizes the meaningless of both human life and the world itself. He's saying all is vain repetition. So he goes on to say that more than anyone can say, and this can be interpreted two ways. It said, first, the wearisome pursuit under the sun left Solomon wanting more of an explanation. Second, it says that he wasn't, no one's able to speak. And what it means by that, it says, faced with the monotonous drudgery and seemingly meaninglessness of life, Solomon had no words to say. He said, the eye, even with the eye seeing, you know, it says here that the eye is not satisfied by seeing or the ear filled with hearing. So Solomon turned to the senses of sight and sound to see if he could find the meaning of life. But seeing nature and life left Solomon unsatisfied as well. You know, the word satisfied means to be full, you know, to have enough. It can also be, mean to be full to the point of overflowing. It can mean both literally and in reference to one's desires. Well, it describes how in response to the Israelites, complaints during the Exodus, if you remember, God promised that he would provide food for them and they would eat until they were full. You know, the psalmist wrote in Psalms 17 that, that he would be satisfied with being in God's presence. Well, the examination of human life and nature left Solomon unsatisfied. His eyes could see, but that was not satisfying. Seeing is only part of the process. Perceiving someone or something does not automatically lead to understanding. And it doesn't lead to the understanding of who that person or that thing is. See, seeing Nate, the nature of life and the world did not provide Solomon with the answers that he was seeking. And then he said the ear, as far as hearing, he goes, all that Solomon heard neither satisfied him nor gave him the answers that he sought. It can also be used here to lesson tells us in the following ways. Listening to someone in the sense of paying attention says uh, of obeying God's commandments. God hearing and answering someone's prayers, you know, hearing and understanding, listening critically. You know, the words Solomon had heard, even from those considered to be wise, failed to provide a meaningful explanation of the nature of life. Again, they left Solomon wanting more. So he, then he says in verse 9, he says, what has been is what will be. You know, at the most basic level of life and nature are critical, repetitive, closed symptoms. In other words, cycles repeat over and over again. The sun rises, the sun sets, and then the sun rises again. People are born, they live, they die, and others are born, and they repeat the same process. He says, in this basic sense, what Psalm is saying, nothing changes. And then he said, there's nothing new under the sun. He said, it's already existed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Solomon wasn't stating that technology could not advance and improve on how we live. <clears throat> but it says, new inventions cannot break the cycle of sin, the cycle of suffering and even death. He said, people of every generation pursue the same things. Fame, power, wealth happiness and so forth. But it says that these things remain for the most part elusive. 
and it says even those who achieve such goals at the end of their lives find having those things changes nothing you know death still comes and all of one's accolades accomplishments and possessions are left behind you know even with all the advances and improvements by humanity and how we live the central issue of life remains the same sinful people need the love and forgiveness of God that's found in the gospel of Jesus Christ and apart from God human experience and history for the most part consists of repetitive lives of toil anguish and the most part here it talks about drudgery futility it says the past the present and the future are filled with oppression hard work and loneliness and leaves nothing to look forward to now again we're uh, we're talking about Solomon here where he's talking about the things of life without God are useless so you know one one way that many people try to bring meaning into their lives is by building a strong reputation and leaving a legacy you know we all want to be remembered so let's read Ecclesiastes 1 11 through 14 because once again Solomon says here there's no remembrance of those who came before and of those who will come after there will also be no remembrance by those who follow them I the teacher have been king over Israel and Jerusalem I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable, miserable task to keep them occupied. I've seen all the things that are done under the sun and have found everything to be a futile pursuit of the wind. You know, uh, some of you might be feeling a little down with all this talk about futility and meaninglessness you know why are we focusing on such a negative topic well the good news is that our bad news helps point us to our ultimate hope you know we might question our purpose but we can find our purpose and that's the whole point of this study you know the good news is that our perspective is not limited to what's under the Sun our Heavenly Father who's above the Sun created this world through Christ and for Christ see everything that God created is good we can enjoy this world and we can have confidence that history is moving towards God's appointed end and as we seek Christ all we need will fall into place so the last part of this talks about connection here where the teacher looked for purpose but only found futility he says no remembrance the term here remembrance can refer to a memorial in the sense of a of memorial day a memorial action a memorial object you know or a memorial in the sense of a record you know but it's used in this verse it may refer to a mental act of remembering you know back in their days and even today one's ancestry was important but in Hebrew culture it was very important it provided for one's identity as a child of Abraham and a member of God's covenant community you know when God appeared to Moses at the burning bush he identified himself as the God of your father the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob you know one of the constant themes that God emphasized to the Israelites was to remember him and what he had done for them so that they would not forget and go after the false gods and the goddesses of the nations around them but we all know what happened that's exactly what happened as time went on they forgot about God they forgot about everything that God had done for them and they started worshiping idols and other things so Solomon here noted that ultimately most people their deeds and their memories the memories of them are forgotten with the passing of time you know there's few that make a mark that under the Sun they're going to be remembered and memorialized 
But even such remembrance of that in the end is forgotten. You know, physical memories may remain for a time, but the significance of the people and events behind such memories mean little or nothing to those who come after. So he's saying, of those who came before, by those who follow them. Well, again, Solomon emphasizes the repetitive cycle all people are called in. He said, as one generation is born and grows to adulthood, past generations die and slowly fade from memory. You know, he says the teacher has been king over Jerusalem. He's talking about Solomon was king under the united monarchy of Judah and Israel. And he reigned for 40 years. And he had the advantages of great wisdom, education, power, and wealth. He says, I applied my mind here in verse 13. He says, there's no remembrance. Let's read this again. He said, there's no remembrance of those who came before and of those who will come after. There will also be no remembrance by those who follow them. I, the teacher, have been king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun and has found everything to be futile, a pursuit of the wind. So when he's saying I applied my mind here, the term for mind here means his heart, which literally means the internal organ that pumps blood, but it also is a reference to the totality of a person's inner being, as well as one's emotions, their mind, and their will. So Solomon searched for the meaning of life, and he had set his heart, his whole being, on this search. You know, he said it was a miserable task. He said, the writings of ancient wisdom and philosophic literature considered the search for wisdom to be the highest calling in life. Well, Solomon labeled such a search a miserable task. Miserable here can be translated as bad or disagreeable. In the ethnical sense, it means evil. You know, so the search for the meaning of life and wisdom was a hopeless task before, because the answer was not going to be found there. You know, the meaning and purpose of life are found only in the context of God and in a relationship with Him. So wisdom and philosophy, which leave God out of the equation, can and do mislead. But they are also even because they, redir they redirect the focus of one's life away from what God intends life to be in the relationship with him. So he said it keeps them occupied. The term occupied means in this context encompasses that all the pursuits of humans including moral, ethical, and religious activities, all the things that are done under the sun are, are futile. It says futile is like a pursuit of the wind you know, Solomon again here acknowledges that all human pursuits apart from God are ultimately without lasting meaning and significance. Throughout Ecclesiastes, Solomon noted the futility of searching for meaning and purpose in the pursuit of such things as wisdom and knowledge, wealth, possessions, pleasure, work, political, even these pursuits can easily, these pursuits easily can, and they do become idols in themselves if we're not careful. In the end, Solomon said they're all futile because they all fail to satisfy. Like chasing after the wind, all things done under the sun are a never ending pursuit that leaves the pursuer unsatisfied and empty-handed. Only one who has a saving relationship with God through Jesus Christ will find the true meaning of life. You know, Solomon was very wise. And he was very wise because what he said in the end, he said, no matter what you do, if you do not have God in your life, it's useless. It means nothing. It's futile. 
So understand that as 